And we're back. Second episode in a row talking about the Samurai Trilogy. Uh, hold on to your seats. Lost in Criterion some more. Just hold on to your seats. As always, I am the Adam Glass. We are here with John Patrick Odawara Dorgan. What? I introduced you. Don't get, don't, I, don't I, mangle my name. Now I pronounce, I mangled my your name. name. I can't Patrick pronounce Patrick Japanese Otari names. Dorgan. Thank you very much. Otari, see, Otawari is what I said. I, I'm a bad Adam person. Adam Racist Glass and uh, <laughs> John. I think it's Adam uh, the Racist Glass. Listen, listen, okay, when I was best man at your wedding, I was too busy being stared at uh, out of the corner of the pastor's eyes to pay attention to what she said your wife <laughs> She uh, had it in for you, Adam. You're, you're the, the minister at your wedding. Uh, I don't know if your mother told her I was a trickster demon or what. <laughs> she just got oh, it. Yeah, she just picked up on that, it. Uh, yeah, that infamous fox demon that uh, tricks people. What's the word? What am I thinking of, Pat? Hmm? <laughs> What's that one I'm thinking of? The the fox uh, one that, that uh, is like the trickster demon. Yes. You know I don't oh. know. Adam Adam Glass is its name in <laughs> oh, Japanese okay. folklore. So that she pro- yes. just the name alone, Adam probably set her off. Yeah, she's like, wait, what? Well, no. For for instance, um, during the rehearsal, she told me no jokes, and I out of nowhere, I don't know. Um, but during the actual ceremony, uh, when. Th- I was asked for the ring. I slipped as I was pulling it out of my pocket. Uh-oh. I dropped it, so I reached back down in. Took took an extra second, and she, out of the out of the, uh, like, really seething smile, said, "said not funny," and I said, "not luckily." Joking. Me and my wife Except were too she, engrossed in our eternal happiness yes. to notice. Fortunately, fortunately, she has a lapel mic on, <laughs> so the entire the entire. Auditorium, well, you'll be happy say, to know that you've never funny. ever watched our wedding video. <laughs> well, no one ever And has, our musician so. decided to play whatever the hell he wanted instead of what we asked for. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. Didn't, I didn't that was a big deal. That. We gave him, like, a list of music, and he played whatever he wanted in the way. Well, maybe you should have... Uh... Killed him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so back to the topic of murdering people for no reason. That... The oh. second Musashi film Episode opens two. with the <laughs> murder of a man for, for no <laughs> discernible reason. For no discernible reason. But it introduces the child uh, who becomes uh, Miyamoto's uh, yes, Jotaro. His, his Robin, if you will. Um, That's one super fucked up way to put it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the, that analogy works entirely, but it's close enough. Uh, but it's yeah. close enough. I'd say it's probably fine. His Robin. I mean, there was a lot of Tim Drake Robin, not. Sure. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah, there's a really gratuitous fight. Uh, there's also a storm brewing during this fight, which 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 lends an interesting uh, color to the scene, but not as interesting as the first movie Storm, in which the lightning causes people to go into negative color. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I wish they had look, kept man, that. Man, Sekigahara right shit got real at Sekigahara. People, you don't even know. people's color palette <laughs> inverted itself. Yes. Uh, Tokugawa, yeah. as you may know, uh, bribed several of the Toyotomi vassals to the other side. The negative color palette was actually them literally switching sides uh, in fear mid battle. I see. I see. I see. I see. That that is true. That is a historically true fact. <laughs> right down to the color palette. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this movie, the first movie, is an action movie that introduces a lot of love story. Uh, Needless is love the story first subplot. movie really an action that, movie? Yeah, I was going to say, I feel that's a pretty ballsy claim, which is me being okay. polite and saying that's not what that... I would not call the first movie an action movie. I will, I will say this, compared to the third movie, the first movie is an action movie. That is perhaps... Okay, um, okay yeah. There is... I'll there is I, I, so I'll just But that. yeah, there, there, the movie, there the are first more action movie scenes. an action movie when compared yeah. to, I don't know, let's say, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> You shut up. You shut up. The first movie is an action drama. Okay. An action drama, if The you will. second movie... 
The second movie is just a strict action film. That's true. With well, here's the thing: it's a strict action film with ex- with an ex- prolonged dead time in the middle where no action happens, <laughs> where nothing happens, where where the only fight where that, it completely uh, abandons are, its action movie premise and yeah, becomes we're starting where we we walk up to fights like there's that one scene where he fights uh, the leader of the uh, of the temple's uh, or the 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 samurai school's brother uh, who's just gotten back into town. Uh, there's that really long scene of him walking the porch of the building, um, and we get like a tracking shot. It's a uh, beautifully shot, and he goes and he he meets the guy, and they talk for a second, and they both draw their swords, and then we cut to the aftermath. So it's an action movie that avoids action, purposefully ignores some of its attempted action well, scenes. But we get into the fact that like we. <laughs> I, I talked about this with my wife earlier today, and the fact because I was watching these films in front of her, and the fact that like Japanese action films circa this time are the least actiony action films in the world, because even yeah. when there's a massively elaborate fight, it's so sad. Like you'll see like uh, Musashi Miyamoto like take a guy out with like one swift stroke, but all it really appears to do is that he moves the blade somewhere near the person's body. And he yes. falls over. He was he was so good that the mere proximity of his blade to right. other people he was created enough to a slay wave them. of air that was so yeah. deadly. Well I think I think he kills everyone out of fear, not <laughs> not actual well, like, physical I mean, damage. Like, we were ta- I was talking to my wife about like this is a an action film with samurai sword fighting where I see blood three times throughout the entire film series. Yes. Yes. And one of them is Matahachi having his big emotional baby breakdown after he kills somebody in the first right. film. Right, yeah. And, 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 and there yeah. is shock, blood on the sword you just used to slit that dude up. Right, and then yes. and then there's a, ton, a scene, maybe it's in the third one, where a guy has a bloody forehead, and then Sashi Miyamoto has a... No, 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 there's another one where the guy fighting the... Pr- uh, no, the guy who fought... um, Sa- uh, What's his name? I just blanked on his name. His uh, His rival. Fights a group of three guys, and one of them has a bloody forehead. Yes, that's like three instances of blood in the entire yeah, action film. There's not very well. I mean, it's it's. The I it's, know, but my point is simply that like avoiding the action is really not very different from showing the action. It's true. It's true because really all Miyamoto does is like slice generally <laughs> in the general direction of a bad guy, and he falls over. Sword fighting yeah. choreogra- choreography is not what I would say these films should be known for. Oh no, certainly not. And and you'll you'll re- you'll notice they're called the the uh, Gone with the Wind of Japanese cinema. Gone with the Wind, also not very well known for its fights. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> now that's resolved. Yeah. So number two, and except for that. Though. And there's a face slap. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's. It's also unclear. Going back to the, you know, duel at the beginning of this film with him versus uh, Bai Ken, the guy who apparently was a Sicklin chain master, but basically yes. uh, gets owned right quick. So couldn't have been yeah, that. everybody. Everybody gets owned right quick. Uh, I'll have you. Uh, I don't. Kojiro and him Not go everybody. at it for quite a while. Yeah, by this no, film's fight sequence <laughs> right, standards. Yeah, this that, like uh, that's uh, an a whole two and a half it minutes is, at least. It is literally five times longer um, than any other fight. Uh, where where um, it's not really you don't really see how he wins, but it appears that Musashi wins by just throwing his short sword at him. Yes. <laughs> just like they're having this like tense chain pull moment where he's got Musashi's uh, long sword arm trapped. So Masashi just hucks his short sword at the guy, and that's apparent. We, I, it's unclear. The camera doesn't show, but it appears that that is how he wins. And yet, I, uh, it's, it's essentially a lawn dart. Death. <laughs> yes, right, right. And, and it doesn't even it doesn't even go into him. It it appears to graze again with the, uh, you know, the mere proximity of blades to people allows Musashi to slay them. Uh, that that principle uh, transfers. A, to his short sword, and B, even to swords that are no longer in his hands. Yes, yes. So, in the, hurling the, the short sword, sword... Yeah, it's it goes near or perhaps grazes uh, this guy, and he is instantly slain. Well, I like because to, I like to think that since... it's lodged in the dirt. Uh, since Kojo, I think it's Kojo, right? The, his rival. I cannot remember the guy's name. Uh, Kojiro. Oh, Kojiro, okay. Is... Um, is... 
his sword when he's is not named fucking up birds. Hanger. So I assume yeah, that possibly uh, uh, Musashi's sword is named something like mm, Uranium 238. Just kills with presence. Space modulator. Yes, uh, it kills with presence. I feel like someone had to have at some point. Uh, when Kojiro is, you know, going on one of his spiels about what a badass he is, and he's like, this is my sword clothes hanger, and my <laughs> yeah, special right. move, my special move is called Swallow Turn, and, <laughs> yeah. like, someone had to have been like, dude, are you fucking drunk? Like, what the hell is wrong with all your names? None of these are, like, related to one another, there isn't, like, a theme going here, there's no, there's no pattern, they're just arbitrary things Words that you are, mean a lot. you are, it's like you're playing Mad Libs with your swordsman <laughs> lifestyle maybe maybe he is uh well, that's so, what i'm yeah, saying I, is like I, Miyamoto, we never get the name of his sword as far as i remember so possibly it's something that kills with proximity yes well yes. we also see for the first time in the second film uh sort of what musashi is renowned for which is fighting with both the, the two sword style that is his his namesake and his legacy and what he is you know renowned for but apparently that just meant sometimes he would throw the other sword at people while he was <laughs> right, fighting them. He would use it as a line guard. <laughs> yes. that, he would strike a really impressive stance, but that was all misdirection, because really he was just going to huck one of them at you <laughs> as soon as he saw an opening. He basically uses uh, the same strategy me as a 12-year-old would have used. Admitted, <laughs> admittedly, he does actively begin using that style at the end in the 80-man anime fight where it's him versus the world and he wins. Uh... And it's just chopping dudes down left, right, and center in in full two sword, uh, you know, fashion. But with an arrow through his leg. Yeah, in, initially, well, you're like, that's, his pants this was what you were. That was your great secret technique. Take out my other sharp thing and throw it at you. <laughs> this is master swordsman. Everybody, he threw a sharp thing at somebody else. Is that, a, is that a chapter heading in the, uh, in go- yes. the book of the Fire? One of his secret techniques in Go is, is uh, yeah, is, well, it's like called throwing the things at people dart. is one of his favorite techniques in general because he uses it against the bandits as well. Was that in mm-hmm. movie two or three? I don't know. I can't. That it's the, the beginning of Well, either way, I, I well, am not the beginning, but I really fucking things at people. I am I am inclined to go back after this and reread Goronosho and see if <laughs> ever mentions some, like when if, if something sword. pops up because all his techniques have really weird ass names like the fire and stones cut and all this other craziness, uh, which are not not the swallow. Turn. No, that's that is straight Kojiro. <laughs> uh, that is. <laughs> well, see, he's he's more sensitive. Yeah, he's a sensitive. He he uses the swallow turn too in his spare time. Fuck up swallows that get too close to him, as you may well, have that's, noticed. That's, okay. that's, a, that's how it got its that's name. That's in the third film, also. Actually, it, it got his turn because he. Uh, I don't know if this is exactly spelled out in the films. I can't remember. It gets its name because he sees a swallow uh, in flight one day and make one of the rapid banking crescent turns for which the apparently swallows were known, and devised the sword stroke to mimic that. You know, swooping arc that these right, swallow tail took. Right, a thing that took. eats bugs is exactly what you want to mimic in sword fighting. Well, we've already established that he's not exactly great on the namings of things. Right, uh, right. Close but, uh, but that is that is allegedly the apocryphal story from which Kojiro derived both the technique and its name. But you would think he would then have passed on, you know, to his sword, like... S- sword of swallow based uh movements or something yeah, and not a yeah. uh, fucking clothesline or whatever it's <laughs> yeah, like something something with the word wing in it right, something, right. something reflecting the, his namesake technique uh which you only really see him using to chop off a dude's hair like a dick <laughs> in the second film that's that is the like the secret grand technique of Kojiro Sasaki is used is displayed yeah. twice yeah, here we're uh, gonna, in the trilogy we're going to cut off somebody's tongue First is to, yeah yes. to chop off some dude's ponytail like a dick, and the second is to fuck up a bird that wasn't. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. And great, really, in the end, yeah. fucking up the bird was more impressive. Right. Oh yeah. Because at least that thing can fly. The dude, he the dude that's he cuts the, the hair uh, off of is one of the least impressive characters. Yes. Although it establishes early on that he uses his most devastating secret technique for the least for, possible for trivial matters. situations and assailants, and when then and when he fights Musashi, gets his ass handed to him. 
Well, right, that's one of the interesting yes. things we get about Kojiro right from the beginning is that, like, he is constantly harping on how much of a badass he is. And then the only time we really see him fight is against those four dudes. And that's it. And so we're like, man, that's a lot of talk. They really, if they wanted to make it more yeah. effective, probably showed, should have shown him being a badass a little bit more. So that it wasn't uh, I don't just, know yeah, if you if, missed the part where he fucks up a bird. Oh, an unarmed okay. bird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gives that bird <laughs> that, what for? That, are you sure that bird was unarmed? This was the feudal era. Well, well, he could have been car- he could have been carrying a coconut. It, but, yes. Yeah. I deserve I, that I, silence. I was trying to think of something to say, but no, Adam, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. That's so back to movie two. Is, <laughs> Right. So, the film opens with this fight, which is essentially never really explained why it is a necessity well, I think it's down. We don't know why it's happening. That he is just a person he later goes, goes on to say, people. like, well, he challenged me, so... And it was like, that's... So you couldn't just fight with wooden weapons or something? You had to give him the old secret technique sword chuck? <laughs> well, there's a... There's a Your ultimate. <laughs> there's apparently a gluttony of, of Ronin. Uh, Dueling about. And we've got a... There can be only right. one. It's exactly uh, like Highlanders. Yes. Yes. What you didn't see is right so, after uh, that, he was he was uh, levitated in the air by lightning that struck down into his sword <laughs> and gave him all the power of the person he killed. Yes, they cut, they they cut, cut away for that. They cut that part out. That's also historically yeah. accurate. <laughs> yeah. It's my understanding of Japanese uh, Even culture. today. This movie actually, um, I say this movie uh, more than more than the others uh, uses symbolism. I think, uh, if if only in one scene, I specifically remember in this one uh, as we cut to uh, a very calm river. Uh, oh yeah, during it, while uh, while Akima is being essentially raped uh, by uh, by her fiance, who happens to be the head of the school that. Uh, Miyamoto is about to uh, destroy. Man, that guy was a chode, am I right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could say that about yeah, almost I'm so all glad the characters. That he... <laughs> and then he totally gets to be allowed to live. So again, continuing yes. with the Mama Otsugi from film one discussion, the people who have it coming the most do not are the get what they have coming. Away. Yeah. Well, and yeah, yeah. It also brings up the point that like <laughs> Adam's referring to characters who are nothing but basically muddy water in my mind. Uh, as something I discussed yeah. with my wife before this, man, all the samurai look the same. <laughs> well, that's why they have the uh, different colors. Well, that, I mean, we, I was talking to my wife, and I was like, "Man, I can, this is really hard to follow sometimes. Who the hell am I watching?" And uh, she's like, "Yeah, they all look the same," which I thought was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, again, I was just say, did you were you like, film. "Thanks, racist wife"? <laughs> no, it was like, but in all honesty, it did prove to be a problem sometimes. So I was like. Especially in, like, the darker scenes, where, like, the lighting was a little bit darker. Yeah. I was like, who, no. who is that? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and bring that up with your class the next time? Just yeah. be like, hey, guys, how the fuck do you tell each other apart? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they were all in samurai outfits and, and had As a guy gene, on their head, I'd like to know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it was a problem in the film. And we've had this problem in a couple other films that we talked about, where I was like, man, all the characters look Gone the same. Gone with the wind. <laughs> All white people look the well, same. Well, I mean, it's true. It, it, well, that's the weird thing. It's only the samurai who look the same to me in this film. Oh, yeah. Oh, Everybody yeah. else no. is totally easy, easy to identify. To but, like, man. Well, you can always, yeah, you can always figure out which one Akemi is, because she has this bizarre practice of fucking wearing bells all the time. Yeah, for right. For discernible reason. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, that doesn't, I wish there was some explanation of that within the movie. Is it a cultural I thing? I, I don't no know. I where she wears bells. <laughs> And the fact that she wants to sound like a cat, apparently, according to "quote unquote" the keeper, which I think is really a euphemism. <laughs> what a great him. name! What a great evocative name for for the keeper. He's just keeping them. He's just keeping these girls safe. Just keeping them around. Yeah, I just keep them. You know, just keeping them. Just you I'm know, keeping it real. Don't want to lose them. Uh, yeah. What a what a great <laughs> just really great name for, for yeah. that guy. Oh, this movie, we also get a, a third woman who inexplicably immediately falls in love with Miyamoto. Oh, really? uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, it is this one, isn't it? Where he's staying with the, uh, 
the geishas. Oh. Ah, uh, the and courtesan. The, yeah, yes. yeah, but that's this not really introduced. Really that's... Yeah, that's a weird scene because it ends real quick and it's... Yeah. We aren't really sure what that's... I'm not entirely sure what that scene is supposed to establish. Well, Other than especially in the movie already two. well-known fact that Miyamoto is basically, you know, irresistible bait. He is irresistible and a eunuch. Yes. In that order. But yeah, like, there's a lot yeah. of scenes like that where... Throughout the second film where I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be gaining from what we're seeing. Yeah, this movie really feels like... It is. It is, I, it is I, the Matrix too. And to some extent it is. It's basically there to go. So here's this guy, Kojiro, who sooner or later we have to get around since he is perhaps the single most well-known part of the Masashi mythos. And we're totally uh, going to save it for th- film three. Yeah, we. But yeah, since we, this is we a trilogy, we can't just well, have those these dudes duking it out now. It could have been a, uh, and a, a just a set. It could have just been two films. It, it's possible. It, it could have happened. They could have just crammed. Yeah. The second, the third it film, the second more, film. It would have. It would have felt Probably. too rushed. I think if they tried to, since the second and the third films are already longer individually than That's, the first movie was. The first one was surprisingly wow. short, yeah. I remember thinking yeah. that uh, a couple nights ago when I watched it again, since I haven't watched these films in probably six yeah, or seven years. it's weird, though, because it's only like a ten-minute difference. Like, the first movie's like 90 minutes, and the second one's 103. But it feels so much longer, because so little happens in the second yeah, well, movie. Yeah, the second film is... Yeah, it's a, that one was the hardest one to watch, for sure, for me, at least. Because, like, yeah. by the time we get to the third film, I am building towards... The final duel. But the second film, I'm yeah. like, so what are we doing here, guys? We're just sort of hanging out? Wow. We're, uh, we're remembering we're remembering that Akima's kind of a jerk. Um, Otsu is still desperately what in love with What did you just call her, Adam? Akembo? What the... F- <laughs> Akemi. Akemi. <laughs> Akemi. I said... I put a Adam, long E. Uh, okay? Akemi yeah, is yeah. what I just said. No. Okay, we've established Adam, it. Adam e's, e's are just are a short e, and eyes are a long e in Japanese. <laughs> listen, Kemi. listen, guys, listen. I speak, I speak American. I think, it, I think it's pronounced That's American. No, no, <laughs> and no, no argument there. <laughs> I don't need you guys to. I, I went to college for English. <laughs> I'd like to point out uh, that we, I can't speak. We, we any also other had language. a similar problem every time we watch a French film. Because I can't pronounce French films to say. Yeah, but on your end, you can't like, pronounce French. On journal, I'm better at uh, what's <laughs> yeah, it's Francois like that. It's, it's that bad. Baguette. I usually just make up a fake name for Baguette. that. Baguette? Uh, Me and Adam may have the wrong person. type of podcast to do. It's so, like most of the criterion collection is foreign. So Marty, Marty Inagaki, uh, his second film. Marty Inagaki. <laughs> called yeah, Sam Ray. Um, it's. Samurai 2, Battle at Samurai. I can't even pronounce that one wrong. I it's told you. It's Chan Tango. I told you. Uh, it's uh, not going to work here anymore. So, uh, uh, Ricky Tiki Tembo and his buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting so good. <laughs> oh, guys. Okay, I'm bad. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm bad at this. It's All okay. right. All right, we've established. Well, let's, let's let's run through the main characters and give you a real quick pronunciation, guys. So we have okay. Akemi Miyamoto Musashi. Yeah, Miyamoto okay. Musashi. We have Akemi and Otsu. Okay, Akemi. And do, are there any Otsu. other characters in this film? Kojiro Saki. Okay, yeah. Ko- Kojiro, Kojiro Sasaki. No, Kasaki. Sasaki. Kasaki. <laughs> yes. And then Sasaki. we have Jotaro. His his um. His, his, his young boy. man, ward. his man, yeah, his man, <laughs> his man servant, yeah. his ward, his gentleman's gentleman, his, um, his just yeah, his <laughs> ambiguous manservant. and then the guy who also follows them around, the horse dude who I can't remember his name. I think it's uh, it Kuma. doesn't matter. He gets killed. Oh, anyway. name, his name is Kuma. He's he's in the third. Oh, movie. Right, sorry, he's sorry. in the third movie. It doesn't matter yet. Um, and I have no idea what the name <laughs> of the guy the skill the school was. I cannot remember the. The one of the main okay. bad guys of the second film. I know I can't remember. The guy, the guy who does Se- not get his Sejiro. come up I think his name is Sejiro. That's possible. It's Sejiro. Good. They refer to him as they refer to him as young master in my in my. Uh, I just really can't subtitles. remember his name because he wasn't important. 
No, he wound up being kind of the least important character, despite that that yeah, we you know, build up attempt that to duel with then. him being like the entire premise of the second film, and then he's really not even yeah. that. Who cares? Ultimately, is sort of where that film goes. Yeah. Since he is dispensed with in five seconds and then left alive to show that Musashi is finally growing after he hallucinates a bunch of old people in his face, <laughs> telling him he's too much of a badass, and then he lets him live. <laughs> yes. I like to think that that yes. is truly historically accurate. The hallucinations. Which, which the one of whom is a priest that is only basically introduced out of nowhere in the second film. Who just yeah. Yeah, if that priest up. wanted to wanted to wanted to talk shit on him, why didn't that priest go, "Hey, don't fucking kill that old dude with the sickle." Why did he wait until afterwards, <laughs> right, right. watch the whole thing go down, and then be like, "You know what? You're too, You're too strong. You're a bad, bad man. man." I sat here and watched you do him in, and didn't say a word about it. <laughs> yeah, so right. you are therefore at fault. <laughs> right. For me, I could have stopped this for thing. me not saying. That guy's dead. It's all your fault. No, it's really that that priest is weird to me because we at least we with I think Tokuan we at least get a he builds with Masashi, you know. But with the second priest, it's like yeah, uh, we just needed the priest to be a little bit older, so we introduced another one, and possibly dickisher than Takuan himself, who is already maxing out the dick scale. Right. This guy. Uh, this guy takes it to eleven. <laughs> yeah. That's that yeah. is probably um, <clears throat> push it to the limit. My uh, the thing I found most interesting about um, about about the about hey, the second film was that it places such a great emphasis on Takwan from the first film, who is one of the more historically well. I don't know if he hung him in a tree for three days, but there is certainly a great deal of evidence to show that. Takuan's Zen philosophies had a great deal of influence on Musashi, and certainly his writings to him are often cited as evidence of this, uh, and reflected in some of Musashi's later writings. But to basically wholesale abandon that character in order to introduce that they old have wise guy, and in order to introduce this fucking dude who just happened to be there for a duel and then talk smack Musashi afterwards, seems like what you guys? What the hell? Yeah, that one's a bit rough. I don't know why. Yeah, uh, given. Given all of the other uh, historical inaccuracies with the movie, you think they could have gone to uh, conservation of characters on that? Yeah, one. like why introduce new characters? Just, basically, like, yeah. But we get into that a lot in these films. Yeah. In general, they really like to introduce characters who are only there for like eight minutes, say a thing, and then they're gone. Yo, know, usually yes. because they're murdered, um, but sometimes yeah. it's because well, they just kind of a hardcore dude. Well, because, I mean, it's like that with, like, the, 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 um, well, I, I want to say concubine, but that's the wrong word. The, uh, yeah, courtesan. Courtesan. She's introduced to demonstrate that Musashi is irresistible and a eunuch. And then We've already disappear. established he's irresistible, though, by that point. Literally right. every so, female like, he's encountered instantly falls in love right. with Right, and so we don't know why. Yes. Yeah, she's just a, a throwaway character so introduced <laughs> to reinforce his irresistibility. Or irresistible ness. Yeah, well, I, I think she also, she she exists, I think, and needlessly still, because other people have handled this, but she also exists to, uh, one more time, uh, tempt him to leave his, his life right. of violence. Like we, when we have and, a character like Otsu, who the audience really feels for, it's yeah. like, well, if he's not going to leave his samurai way for her, why would he leave it for this random courtesan? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Well, uh, she she puts on a mean dance. Oh, that's true. She does. It's true. Can can Otsu dance? No, she can Otsu play basically a flute. probably not. Otsu, I'm not sure entirely can like walk since the th- amount of time in these three films she spends collapsing to the ground <laughs> in inconsolable <laughs> it's, screaming. It's polo or it's, polio? Sorry, not polo. Not not a not a game on horse. That's how I. <laughs> it's polio. Is that not how you cry? That's how I cry. I always, whenever I cry, my knees give out first. Yeah, I mean, I just fall to the ground. Even when it's because then, uh, you know I'm choking, collapse in a heap on like my own, you know, yeah, spit or something. I just collapse to the ground and weep openly while clutching a rock or a stick no, or a tree. Uh, uh, certainly, 
Certainly it gets ridiculous because every time we see her in this movie specifically, yeah. uh, that happens. Uh, but that's, you know, it's very common shorthand in, in Japanese cinema. Great or, despair. You know, being yeah. overcome with emotion. Great despair. Um, I, I think even uh, Musashi does it at one point in this movie. Um, when she when she spurns him toward the end. Um, which I'm really not clear, still not clear I why she does that. Yeah, it's a little unclear, but I think the in general idea is that he's doing something kind of wrong because she wants yeah. kind of a husband, and and he has uh-huh. spent a lot of time saying he can't do these things with her, and then out of nowhere he just jumps her. Yeah. And yeah. so well, I think yeah, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a pretty a reasonable odd. reaction to like what in the holy heck are you doing? Um. Now, why it devolved into him running away within, yeah, well, they don't, neither of them speak the same language? I don't, because, like, they could yeah. talk, but no, this is, this is feudal Japan. He's going to stomp away and go murder someone. All right. Instead. He's got to, he's got to kill a guy. Several. No, it's just, it's just like, uh, it's just like in, uh, the... Beauty and the Beast we watched. Uh, sexual frustration. Manifest as violence. Uh, yeah. Lends to murder immediately. Manifest as, as, as violence immediately. Immediate violence. Except there are no deer around because it's feudal Japan and there are no animals except for that bird and a couple right, of flies. Right, map paintings are not very uh. good for animals to live on, Adam. <laughs> they're, they're not very <laughs> nutritious. So so he's got to go, instead he's got to go kill 80 folk. <laughs> to be fair, they tried to kill him first. That is true, that is true. And they continue to try to kill him, even after he uh, successfully murdered most of them. You know, I do like one thing about this film. Right? All three of these films. They're really, they stick to the to the 80s cartoon henchman strategy. One at a time. Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's good to see. That well, that's... that's where the 80s cartoon strategy came from, is, is, is samurai films of the 50s. They all yeah, dance all around dance, him. One of us will go attack. attack. We'll draw straws. One of us will go attack. Well, that's, that's the there's watch. something that there's something about that's, that scene which is I think designed to contrast in some parts with the scenes of violence we get from him in the in the earlier in the first film, which is that in the first film there is an awful lot of him just swinging around, yeah, flailing, like, and, and everybody just flailing yeah. around at people that are clearly still four to six feet away from him, and he's just going yeah. ape swinging a thing around. And in this one, it's the usual, you know, it is the he is he is the what is the cinema shorthand for Japanese master swordsman, which is that he is the consummate counterattacker, and that any time anybody takes a swing with him, they always miss or he deflects and then they die. Two right, seconds they die later. within one uh, extra stroke. Yeah, yeah they, which is like the Japanese shorthand for master swordsman is that they are masters of the parry and counterattack, as opposed to him yeah. in the first film where he is very aggressive but in a wild and grotesquely inefficient way. Uh, and in this scene, uh, where he's, you know, placed in a scene similar to himself in the first film, where he's surrounded on all sides, uh, in this one, it's, he's, you know, he's employing tactics by luring him into the rice paddies. He is, you know, not overextending himself. So I think it's supposed to contrast with his, his, with, yeah, with, no, I think you're definitely right. Film, but it is still, uh, <laughs> That notwithstanding, yeah, it's it's well, it's still just ridiculous because who would do that? It's still yeah, it's still the it's still the henchman. Routine. Yeah, I mean, and you get that even in like modern film when they want to demonstrate this guy's a badass. Watch him take on eighty people, but they never actually take on eighty people. He takes on no, they take on yeah, he takes on one, one guy eighty times. Basically, well, let's not get carried away here. Well, it's not the same guy, but I mean, you know what I mean. Like it's it might as well but, yeah. be because it's one dude at a no, time, no. and so. Eh. It's just a thing, but it's like wow! I just—it's like watching the Ninja Turtles or something. No, no, it—it it, it always happens. It's—it's, it's, and it always happens. I mean, in the history, even even prior to this, and even in American cinema, uh, it's it's how hand to hand combat. Yeah, there's is no always there's no rush handled. of guys who just beat the hell out of him. Yeah, because like honestly, like because that that doesn't right, play right. well on screen either. I mean, that's just a mass of people you can't see right. what's it, going I on anyway. I just thought it was fascinating to watch in this because it's like, wow, this is this is very, wow, they did it too. <laughs> like, because, like, yeah. in Seven Samurai, we don't quite get that. 
And that, that's our other sort of stepping stone towards this film in the Criterion Collection is, you know, Seven Samurai, and you get more of that that rush of people affecting Seven Samurai. We're like, yeah, the, the samurai yeah. is still there cutting down one guy at a time because he only has, like, the one sword. But they're not... Yeah. Because there is less organization to the attackers, it feels more authentic than let's all dance around the good guy and come at him one at a time. Yes. So I'm just saying that basically yes. Kurosawa did a better job of that. I, I, I think... I, yeah. I don't think anyone would argue That's just what I'm <laughs> That of the two, Kurosawa is well, the I mean, director. Especially when uh, it came yeah. to the fight scenes. Also in this movie, uh, we have uh, Matahachi, uh, the what old shit, friend. What a shit show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So in the last movie, Manny, he took... Just call him Manny, Adam. You racist Manny. animal. Just don't, yeah. don't bother with his name, Manny. We'll call him Manny. I was actually impressed. Adam got pretty good with Matahachi. I know. I'm actually being facetious here because he is actually. He's, yeah, Hachi, he's actually saying the name. It, it, yeah, thank you, you guys. Um, love you. But uh, to to lend more credence to your arguments, uh, in my notes, I do refer to him as Mata every time I mention him. You just totally Marty. ruined um, it, Adam. <laughs> Marty, Marty Hatchy. Yeah. <laughs> Marty Hatchy. Marty Hatchy. Any Japanese name I can't pronounce right. is Marty now. That's apparently. <laughs> Apparently, what I've learned today. Um, anyway, uh, we get we get um, possibly uh, besides Otsu, the most tragic character. He's a tragic character, but he's also a douche. But he's 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 no, he, he doesn't, doesn't start as a douche though, and that's that's where the problem a is. Heck of one by the because he he thinks he's doing the right thing when he takes uh, when he takes the Kame. Here's the thing, Kame. okay. I'm, How see, did, now, we, now I'm self-conscious about this, it. Adam, like Kemi. <laughs> so here's, Kemi. here's my problem, okay? He was not a bad guy in that, but he was because he doubted his friend. He thought his friend did something yeah. bad when he should have realized that his friend no, would never done so, would have never done something like that. Like we yeah. never get we never no. get No, you're right there. Uh, uh well I get at the at the time I forget his name, but um Takezo is never Takezo the rapist at any point in the first film. And yet, like, yeah. Matahachi's, like, really on the ball to, like, be like, yeah, yeah, he totally raped you guys. Yeah, what an asshole. This guy I've known my whole like, life yeah. who's been totes upstanding up until now. Yeah, sure, he raped you. Yeah, right? so he just well, buys into it. Time for me to completely change how I perceive him based on the word of a stranger. Right, and and abandon the life I have set up for myself. It, 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 right. He is a bad guy, right at the beginning. He's just not you know a bad what? guy in the you same You know level. what? Yeah, not only did he rape you, but fuck Otsu. That's yeah, exactly. He abandons his, <laughs> his fiance and all these things. It's like, <laughs> what? Yeah, so he is, he, if he's not a bad guy, he's at least a class A moron. In the first film, he just becomes significantly yeah, he just becomes worse a much in this worse movie. person I, in the second film. But he is a bad guy yeah. in the first film too. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, he he steals the uh, the samurai credentials and uh, tells his mother that he went to school, samurai school, and is so awesome. Well, and the real issue is that like I guess he could do that, and it wouldn't make him a terrible person per se in the grand scheme of the film. It's the fact that he then goes hunting for his his uh his former fiance yes. in that very and I do mean the word hunt. Yeah, he's he's trying to kill yes. her. Yeah. And so like that's what really it turns negative. Is like when do we go from loving this woman to I'm going to murder her in the woods with my with my mother. Well Can I can I can I butt in to here? Be fair. Well, Utsugi. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I said it. You're true. That's right. <laughs> Although I love her. The I love her. Fight, terrible. fight the true enemy. This is the point where in the broadcast I hold up a picture <laughs> of Mama Otsugi and rip it in half and say fight the true enemy. Yes. <laughs> she, uh, no, it, she convinces know, him to try to murder again, we Otsu. Get uh, and and he, shows, he shows regret. He doesn't no, want to do it when it comes true. time. He captures her and uh, doesn't try to, he tries Wait, to convince her to run still, away with him. He's, he's still a douche. Because he's like, uh, run away he's still with me. Yeah. No, it's no, like, no. no, you had an opportunity to marry me, you ass hat. One film <laughs> ago, you, you, you left. So remember when you uh, not only completely betrayed your friend, 
but also simultaneously decided that was grounds for leaving me and breaking off our betrothal and cheating on me. Uh, n you know, uh, I'm not, you know, there's a gulf between our hearts that cannot <laughs> be crossed, as I believe how she phrases it. Yeah. I believe that's how she phrases yeah. those, that series of events that he has done. Yeah, so it's all uh, on him. And so, yeah, we see him as a, he, he'd be a tragic character if it were not the fact that it's all his fault. If there were any step that in this true. process that, that was true. not his fault, he would be a tragic character. Like, if he had been, like, you know, somehow forced to go with it to Kyoto or something like that. Or, you know what I mean? And then we watch, and we watch him. Well, I think, I think he, he feels does, forced. I think he, he misunderstands. That, yeah, but because he's I, having I, a self-pity party. Obviously, it's his, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he feels forced, I think. And, and he continues that pity. And, um... And I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily if true he's that he ever he ever cheats on Otsu. He actively um, attempts to have sex with Akemi, and she rebuffs him in the first film. Mm, that's true. That's oh true. no, you're, you're uh, right. that's where I'm going. And then after that, I forgot about that. that. And, and, you are, a and then after that, he bangs the mom and goes with the mom. So what? The does, yeah. does he bang They're the married. mom? I think Do it's. I think it's. Implied. It's implied. We have her writing a letter. We have her and writing a letter saying by the fact that they get married. But she's untrustworthy anyway. They are married. Oh, they say I don't know married. if they actually get married. He the calls thing. her because his the next wife. Time, no, she's... In the second film, yeah. Does he? When they are... When when she's okay. scheming with the other okay, guy, because and she comes back and she orders him to get the yeah. coach, he says, I'm your husband, or something like that. So, yeah, he very clearly okay. said... I, I must fine. have fallen really asleep for that. Uh, all of Oko, I yeah. think her name is, is scheming is basically a snooze fest with with Mister Awesome Mustache. Yeah, is what I refer to him because I can I never did remember his name. You know, <laughs> Mister Awesome who, Mustache who loses the guy who's loses trying his to down. work with her to hook up Akemi with the uh, Sejiro. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Yeah. He appears in the third film as well, so I just always thought of him as Awesome Mustache. He's 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 just like the lieutenant of the. Yeah, school. I mean, I assume we have a name, but I don't remember. Yeah. So, uh, this is dick, why I should probably. Guy. This is probably why this I guy's a dick. These That's films, his name. Frankly, but, um, <laughs> he gets his he gets his ponytail cut off, and then he's a bandit. Yeah. Uh, well, I think those are directly we related. We have. I think you lose that. You lose yeah. your uh, top knot, and it's over. You're a uh, you're a bandit. It's done. Yeah. Dunzo. You have no choice. I guess I just I don't understand Japanese culture. Like I don't understand Japanese yeah. words. You just be or in the dark for the rest of it. <laughs> syllables. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a um, bad person. It's it's definitely a uh, her entire. I here is my problem. One of my problems with with that with that part of the film with the mom. Uh, with the mom. Okay. Why the fuck do we care anymore at all? Yeah, that's about also mom? true. Yeah. No, I never did. I never did. Akemi, I can understand to, us have... vaguely caring about Akemi in a in a certain way, uh, sort of as an ongoing that bizarre love thing that's more or less just her loving him. But why the why in the fuck do we care about the mother at all? Past past her treachery that splits up the two of them at the at the onset of the of the first. Well, film. here's what I'm going to say yeah. though. I think. We don't care about the mom, but we need a frame of reference for Madahachi. And we do need Madahachi because we're basically, at that time, although they abandoned this for the third film, following the story of two separate people as one of them evolves in one way and one of them evolves in a radically different way. We watch, uh, we watch, uh, Musashi become a honorable samurai and we watch Madahachi become dude who steals samurai credentials and gets threatened in the woods. It provides a sort of a contrast yeah. material, basically, for the two, for Musashi's story to show this is not the story that everybody in the same situation would go through. Because Monohachi's in a very similar circumstances, at least as far as the film is concerned, at the beginning. They both go out to fight this war, and then they both are on the losing side, and we watch Musashi do these like try to come back to his village, go through all these trials and tribulations, and eventually become the the peaceful master of the sword that he becomes. Whereas we watch Madahachi turn into a sh sniveling coward, hiding in the woods as he tries to kill his girlfriend. 
eh, I don't know if it's 100% necessary, what? but I think it's what they go for. What? I, for, I forget. What is his ultimate fate other than Kojiro he just gets scared confronting away, him? As far as I can tell. That's it. He runs away peeing yeah. his pants, as far as I can tell. Chase him off. Because, like, Kojiro doesn't even, like, sit, like kill him, as far as we know. No, it just appears to spook him. Yeah. Although, we can assume that Matahachi died of a heart attack, like a, much like a, a, a cornered rabbit would have. It's, yeah, it's sort of... Again, I don't... I don't know why we care about Ogo and Matahachi's storylines at that point. I understand that they're trying to show that, you know, one man evolves and another one and another man degenerates, but why do we care about what happens to Matahachi anyway? Well, I think it's just contrast material. And also, if you took that out, the film would be like 60 minutes long. That's probably true. Because, I mean, we already get, we're already in that film in a major dry spell between murders. And (laughs) so we end up in the situation where, like, just the story of Musashi would be maybe a little bit dry. And so I'm wondering if they're basically there for entertainment value. Yeah. Just to watch this scheming woman and this sniveling coward as they get their asses handed to them. You think there's not comic, comic relief, relief. Maybe just story relief? Because, like, what, I mean, during the second film, what does Musashi do other than kill people? It's true. It's true. We need a story. We need some, some semblance yeah, of and a plot. And they are the story, as sad yeah. as that is. They're the closest thing we have to a plot in that film. So. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, there's you're the right. love story I, plot. I, so there's yeah. that. I mean, That's... there's the love story between Musashi and uh, Otsu. But that story takes huge breaks, too. Where, like, nothing happens because she can't find him. Yeah. Or whatever. You know, also. Yeah, um, and I think that's really where this movie fails. Is that yeah, those there is no the story in the film. Pieces of plot, and they're so unimportant in the grand scheme of what what this movie is that they're just there. No, no, I think you you called it Matrix two earlier, and that's really where this is. The first movie stands alone, but the second and third right, don't. right. The second, the third I, one. I think that is. Second, I think that is partially a art. A I think that. Symptom is in part a a bit of forced artifice because of the inevitability of them to tell the Masashi story without having the Kojiro finale and needing yeah. and not yeah. being able to just jump to the Kojiro finale when they have already got six different plot threads from the first film in the form of all these different women yeah. that they have to simultaneously give screen yeah. time to. No. They have to they have to resolve it. Um, but still nothing really gets nothing really gets resolved here. Right, Mahachi like, we gets could have done without him. Only, <laughs> and and it does it yeah, and we don't we don't even need to see him again, really. I mean it's because we see Oku again, we kinda need to figure out what happened to him. But we already know she's treacherous and seeing her with another man is, uh is, yeah, works it, for us, really. Yeah, is enough. We, it's not a surprising um, behavior. I mean, we do need it if we're going to establish a yeah. Hemi is sort of a miserable, pitiful character. Uh, we need to see that she, her mom's attempting to sell her, maybe, I guess, is something we need. But then again, yeah. like, it's weird because they do establish her as a absolutely pitiful character who's in love with Musashi. But then she turns yeah. out to be also a bad person. So it's like, wow. Know, again, I'm going to say, I don't, know if it's, I don't know if we're just learning that Akemi's a bad person now. No, we're not just now Pitiful. Learning, but... I think her pitifulness is reinforced, certainly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would they, argue that... Yeah. They establish her pitifulness so that we feel, maybe feel bad for her as we approach the third film. And yeah. then in the third film, she tries we to can't... do in her rival with an axe. Yeah. So... Which is my favorite scene in the film, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this movie, in this movie, she threatens she threatens to do her arrival with a knife. But here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, so, I think I've like, already... Really, I've, I've she already is lost interest a sociopath. In uh, because we established pretty yeah. early that she's willing to kill somebody over a man who has no interest in her. Yeah. It's yeah. not even a rival. And it's not a rivalry. I mean, Musashi has never said anything yeah. to her. About wanting to be with her. So. 
Yeah. Uh, in, 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 that's, that's one of the major problems with this movie, and, and, you know, we, we said it in the last discussion, too. Um, there's only one virtuous woman in this entire, entire universe, uh, and everybody else is, uh, well, is either evil or unimportant. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is the courtesan is important. not necessarily a person of, yeah, that no, we get. No, no. She's it's just that yeah, she's not important. She has she's, no significance. It's just we don't care. And there's a few other yeah. women that are established. Yeah, who have, no, like there's like um, Kujiro's love interest who has borderline no significance. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. also the th- yeah, uh, who I just forgot about until you said right now, and <laughs> I watched too, these movies uh, yesterday. Well, she's very uh-huh. unimportant. All she does is give Kujiro a chance to talk about himself without without soliloquy. Nah, I can't yeah. say that word. With, with, yeah. without a terrible soliloquy that yeah. se- would seem out of place otherwise. And his, and even then, it's yeah. just I mean, like, she's, I am such a huge asshole. Yeah, yeah. He's like, this yeah. is well, my she, sword close hanger. She acts, We're awesome she acts, This is my sword close hanger. Are you sure she about acts that? Near, <laughs> like, have, you really, you decided on that one, huh? Can't, like, we can oh, change it now. We haven't even made You know, there's not, yet. you didn't file like a certificate or anything. You you don't have to go with clothes hanging. It could be anything. Uh, no one, only the people you <laughs> have made the pretty regrettable mistake of telling you named your sword clothes hanger to uh, know this. So there's no, there's nothing holding you back from, yeah. there's, <laughs> we could there's still, still time. We can still change that. It's not legally so, binding. So, um... But she she acts she acts as a mirror. Uh, their relationship acts a mirror, as a mirror to Musashi and Otsu, um, and that's how we, that's the third movie. We can get to that more and right uh, because it's we time will to move on very to the third soon movie. because I think ultimately ultimately all we can say about this movie is uh, it tries to establish uh, that Musashi realizes he's a bad person in some ways by killing um, everyone and. Right. and <laughs> by killing everyone. He kills everyone but one man. He stays the his one sword at the last that. moment and realizes that he he doesn't need to kill everybody. But it's the one guy who actually kind of deserves it within the context of the movie. Yeah. Uh, so good job there. You fucked it up again, Misashi. Um, You'll get it right in the third film. <laughs> and we move on. Yeah, yeah, he does. And we'll talk about that more yep. at the next episode. Yep. So next thanks time. for listening to this one. We'll be back with Samurai Part 3. Um... Which I is the Gan Gan Rio. If I if I had thought about du- it more duel second, at I Gary Island. Gan Rio. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome Island. to Gary Ann Island. Gary Ann Island. Gary Ann. The duel at Gary Indiana. Uh, my home sweet home smells like death still because of this this duel. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Uh, adieu. Thank you.